obviously it's all gathered. Now we're going to stitch the tape on and distribute that fullness, conscious of how the coat's going to look when it's finished. So I'm always working it in the direction which it wants to go, which it needs to go, it needs to lie. So I'm doing the lapel here, I'm going to keep working it over this way. We don't catch through at all at all. When we're doing up there it's okay because we've got all this padding underneath. So if you catch through it's okay. But this is now the front of our coat. So we got to be extra careful when we're coming through here not to, to pick up the canvas only. Drop the cloth underneath. Yeah, see the end of your fingers are like, like little sensors. You're running the needle through to, see, to feel how, how deep that you've gone finger underneath. I mean the techniques haven't changed, the, the textiles have, the hair the cloths and the the hair cloths and the canvases and that have got lighter and uh, as a result we've had to work with softer hands but when you're working with lighter cloths uh, you couldn't get as away with as much now as you could have put in the old days. You look at old sample pieces when you when you stitch now you gotta stitch very very finely or if you pull too hard, it'll, it'll show these cloths are much lighter than they were before. A friend of mine's a physiotherapist. He does a lot. He does a lot of work with tailors. They're back. I look like a spine, like with a spine looking like you've got scoliosis. Just like mine. So again, I always thought it'd be a really good way of knowing if, you know. Uh, uh, if you're being read by a real tailor or a novice, you just have a good look at his posture. <laughs> his posture's too good. He's, he doesn't work in the trade. All right, so just putting the water on here now. Press this well on here. I'm keeping my block behind it. Keeps it short in the front. Stops me from stretching the edge. Do a lot of underpressing. The best time to press the jacket is when, when it's being made. The easiest time to press it because it's all in bits. So we have the the dough mat here on top and the the hair cloth underneath. We've put some length into the dough mat and the hair cloth, and we we basted it and we've padded that together. Basted it first, and then we put all the pad all of these pad stitching in. And as we padded it, we rolled it. So you could create the shape and the length that we need. Through the shoulder then we put a cut, two cuts, one through the canvas and the other through the hair cloth. So it's here you want this really clean in here. We don't want to get any length of that. And then you can see I've used a zigzag machine here and I've covered the cut with a, a, a bias silicia and then zigzag it on. Gives you more structure in the shoulder without having to put any more structure in there. I like using the zigzag because it, it gives you a lot of stability right here in the shoulder the shoulder area. And it also allows it to give. I've also put a small taken a small cut out of just at the side the front side. And then I've taken the, the usual cut through the front here, the front chest cut. We put the canvas on as you can see full inside stops it going short pulling on the outside and then we have the tape on here and this holds the edge it also helps to hold it to hold in the fullness of the canvas as well tape pulls the edge, holds the edge, so it wants to curl in. The whole coat is slightly pulled off over the over the canvas. It helps give it a created shape. We would length on the inside to have a clean on the outside. See a dirty inside is a clean outside when it comes to the canvas. It looks slightly full on there. 